I think if more people knew what was possible in Excel, it would kind of blow their mind. So I'm going to show you step by step how I built this dashboard behind me. This is 100% Excel, standard features, nothing fancy. I just want to show you how to do this yourself. First things first, dark background, control A, go with something pretty dark here. Right about there, I think it's nice. Next, insert tab, grab a rounded rectangle under shapes and drop it in. We're just going to make this thing uh, gray for now. So what I'd like to do first is get a sense of what's going to go on the page. I'm just going to copy paste this a few times and get a rough layout. So we're going to think about this in terms of units. I want this to be about four units wide with a nice broad section on the bottom. I want a big section here. It's going to be where I put my kind of main metrics and I need a little blank space here where I'm going to add some text. And when we talk about units, what I mean is keeping sizing consistent. So this square here is exactly two of these tall and two of these wide. We keep these organized using the um, alignment and distribution tools. If you hold shift and multi-select your shapes and then you head over to the shape format tab, right? Right here you can set your alignment so you can make sure that they all align top meaning the top edge is aligned you can then distribute them easily to make sure they're evenly spaced i know this seems like this is like the most important thing i'm going to teach you on this whole video take the time to align things make sure they're evenly spaced it is the secret to making your work look more professional uh next insert tab i'm just gonna get some text in here and you just click and drag to drop that in now first thing you're always gonna have to remove the background and the outline I'm using an uh, Avenir Next uh, for these fonts. One's just the bold version, one's the regular version. Don't be scared to use different size fonts, just like you would if you're making a PowerPoint deck. And now for the most exciting part, colors. We are gonna use a gradient fill for this. Now these gradients are a little tricky. Don't worry if you don't get it right the first time. And I'm gonna send out a copy of this file so folks can have a reference if they want it, okay? I'm doing a rainbow here. I'm getting wild. We're going purple all the way to green. And then I'm using a slightly different gradient here that's a little bit more warm colors just to create some contrast between the two. Both are linear gradients, both are at 60 degree angles. You can see that right here where it has our angle. I'm gonna use this as the loose base for all the other gradients we use on the page as we create this rainbow effect. So for our top section, each portion is gonna be a different part of the color spectrum. We've got blue green, orange to reddish orange, orange to red to red, and then red to like a faded out color here. How do we do this? Each gradient, we just set a color on either end. We make sure it's at 0% angle and linear. If you're just trying to understand this, if you look at a color wheel, we're essentially just rotating around a little bit. So from this color to this color, essentially, equidistant from the center. Not everybody has a color wheel. If you don't have that, just stick with colors that seem relatively close to each other. If you're working with like your RGB sliders, just don't make drastic <laughs> changes in your RGB sliders. You want it to be a little subtle. We do the same thing on the next one and so on and so forth. I'm going to list all of the hex values for the colors, I guess, in the description. Uh, if it won't let me do that, I'll, I'll send this out on the newsletter anyway, so you can just actually look at the literal color value yourself. All right. Next, our big section here. This one's important. Maybe do it a little differently. This is inspired by this website I saw that had this kind of Instagram-esque color scheme. So I'm doing like this Instagram-ish purple to orange kind of thing here. So in this gradient, we have three steps instead of two. You add steps and remove them by using these buttons here. And then if you're trying to figure out where where your gradient actually kind of crosses over your shape. You just move these around. There you go. Move it to the right. Now on this big wide bottom section, I want to have a little more contrast. And it kind of as we move down the page, I think I'm going to go from warm to cool. So this is really wide. So I gave it a couple extra steps and we're just going to do this kind of faded purple to purple to blue here all the way over to that other blue. And again, I'm reusing colors I've used before, right? The bluish green I'm reusing, this blue I'm reusing, these purples I'm reusing. I'm trying to reference back to the same colors as much as I can. Okay, let's focus on this little card here. This is kind of the focal point of the whole dashboard, so I'm gonna put a lot of time into this and make it look really good. First thing, I saw this inset effect on another site. If you saw our final version, it's this little inset here. So I wanna add that, I really like it. So I'm just gonna copy paste my shape, scale it down a little bit so it kind of fits inside the other shape. And this doesn't need a fill color right now. We're not gonna use a fill color on it. I'm just gonna make it white so it's easier to see. But what it does need to have is a line, and I'm to use a gradient line in this case. So our gradient line is a purple to a red to an orange, very similar to what's behind it, but I've just made each color a little tiny bit darker. Uh, if you're wondering how to make a color darker, uh, when you look at your color, your kind of RGB slider, you can just slide this to the right. That's going to make it darker. Uh, if you want to make it more saturated, just move it towards the outside. Both of those would work in this case. And then let me remove the, the fill so you can see what we're working with here. I wanted this to stand out a little bit extra, so I just gave it a little tiny drop shadow here. Uh, we're just using an outer drop shadow and it's 84% transparent, so not super dark, just very subtle. 
Now for the fun thing, we want an image fill in this. I'm just gonna use a stock image. Under the insert tab, there's a pictures option here and you can do place over cells and look at stock images. This I think only shows up on Microsoft 365. Uh, you just grab one with a skyline if you want. In this case, I'm actually gonna grab a PNG file I have that has a transparent background and you're gonna see why in just a second. So I've got this little city skyline here. In the picture formatting tab, I've just used the uh, correction tools to adjust the, the color to kind of match our theme. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit Control C. I'm gonna go over to our shape here and then I'm gonna hit picture or texture fill and clipboard and it's gonna drop it in. And that's how we get that cool look you see there. Next, we gotta get our fonts in for everything else. We're going insert tab text like we did before and then text box. So through the magic of editing, you don't have to watch me drop in every single one of these and edit them. I can just go over the styles we used here. So this, our, I'm thinking of this as our primary metric. This is our main focal point. These are all placeholder metrics, but we can tie them to a cell later just by in the formula bar hitting equals and then clicking on a cell to link it to a cell. But for now, I'm just typing in placeholder numbers. What I've done here are two things. One, I've used a white font and there's two ways of kind of toning it down a little bit. If this was bright white, it would just be a little too intense, I think, and possibly a little too con contrasty. So instead I've just picked a text that is like a light version of the background. So in this case we've got an orange background so I just chose a light white color that is tinted just a tiny bit orange. You can just do that by bringing over your green and blue here a tiny bit on your RGB slider or just collecting a color kind of loosely in the orange area close to the center. An easier way to do this would just be use white text and then uh, go in here and just make it a little transparent and that's going to kind of make it match your background a little bit. I just want a little fancy this time. If we got metrics in, we're making sure we got a lot of room for the metric to get bigger in case this number grows over time. And we're using font size to show hierarchy here, right? Big font, main focal area, small font, secondary focal area, right? Up here, we're using something that's also a little bit smaller so that it's not drawing your eye too quickly or too intensely off the main focal point first. Now we gotta get some charts in there, some visuals. So let's go over to our data. I imagine you got like a big table of data like this, meaning maybe each week you copy paste in new metrics or values here to a nice big table with whatever your most recent performance could be anything you want. And what I've done is I've selected my whole thing, gone to the table tab, turned this into a table. You actually under the insert tab, you have the option to turn something into a table. And I've just named my table financials. So it's easy to reference later on. And all of our data processing is gonna be done using pivot tables and some other kind functions. We're never going to do anything here. This is just where our data lives and is added. All of our processing happens in another sheet over here. We have just added a series of pivot tables. You add a pivot table by going to insert tab, hitting pivot table, reference the table. What did we name ours? Financials. Hitting enter and it's going to drop it in. Now you can select what you want in there. In this case, I'm going to put in a date and let's look at units sold. Great. And it's going to make a table of units sold by date. Simple as that. Once you got your pivot table, you can just click into it, go to the insert tab and hit pivot chart. By default, it's always going to drop in this little bar chart here. Nothing wrong with that, but that's not what we're going to use. So we're just going to cut this control X to cut it. We're going to paste it over here and then we're going to turn it into the chart type we want. So we just go to the design tab change chart type. We want this to be a line chart with markers. We're then gonna go to format chart area here, remove the fill, remove the line. That's just the border and the fill in the background. We're gonna delete all the labels we don't want. We're gonna delete our uh, little, all of our lines, everything we don't want in there. Get it roughly in place. And I'm also, in this case, gonna go to add chart element. I'm just gonna drop in labels here. And you can change the fonts for everything in your chart just by going to the home tab and updating your font color. All right now I'm gonna click into this little line. I'm just gonna get it styled right. We're just gonna make sure it's white and it's the right size and all that. We're gonna do the same thing to our markers, make sure that they're white and the right size. Nice, I like it. I've just added a little shadow as well just to make it so the line stands out. It's right here under the uh, format chart area tab. Great, love it. I think it looks good. I think that's what we were going for. <laughs> I'm just going to show you a few other quick chart types and that's going to kind of get everything in place. People love geo charts. Let me just show you a geo chart really quick. So we just inserted a pivot table here, just like we did before, and it's country and then sales as the value. And we've just filtered this one down to a particular country. You can do that easily, if not just by using this menu here, but instead by inserting a slicer. So if you click into your pivot table, hit slicer, it is going to insert a filter that affects that pivot table. You can filter it by whatever you want. And we can use this just to select whatever country we want. We're going to put this back on our dashboard and use it later. So let me just close that for now. Next, we need to create a separate little entry. This is not a pivot table. All it's doing is just saying, grab the value from this cell and grab the value from this cell. It's literally just equals BA3 equals BB3. All I'm going to do then is select that, go to the insert tab and hit maps. 
and it's going to drop in a map that shows whatever country we have. We don't need the labels on this. We can delete everything and we're just going to style it the way we did before. Let me cut this and paste it over, remove our background, remove any outline. If you click into the chart, you can update your colors here. I've just made this a default blue color because of our blue background. And you want to make sure that it's zoomed to the region you want. I want just the country and region, not multiple countries and regions. So I select that here. Also, I just got to get my text above here. So I'm going to right click my text and hit bring to front so that it's above the chart. That's a geo chart. We're going to do the same pivot chart process for these three others as well. For this one, we've just done a bar chart, but we've just styled our bars to be a white fill that is like 50% transparent. And that just helps it kind of blend in with our background. We've done a donut chart here. In this case, just made it yellow. There's no other real custom formatting here. And we did another trend line here. Obviously powered by the same data, we'll need to update that later. <laughs> now we have this really, really long wide section down here. And I want to get a chart in here that needs a long time series shown because when you have lots of wide area, that's a great opportunity to put in a, a time series chart that's plotted over a long period of time. So what I've done is is gone to the insert tab and dropped in a pivot table here. My pivot table is date and it's also showing, it's showing two values, sales and then profit. So when we insert a pivot chart for this, it's gonna, they're both gonna be bar charts. So I'm gonna cut this and paste it over, get it loosely sized, remove any elements we're not gonna be using. We're gonna add our own legend, I think for this, we don't need the one that's in there by default. Of course, we wanna remove our background and our outline so that it's transparent. And as always, get our text into a color that's actually readable. <laughs> Now what we're going to do that's cool here is we're going to turn one of these bars into a different chart type but leave the other bar as a bar. So I'm going to grab this one here. I'm going to go to design and I'm going to hit change chart type to a line chart. I'm going to do an area one here, 2D area chart. And there we go. Now we have two different chart types in the same chart. Kind of cool. I want to give this one a gradient fill. Love it. And then I'm going to give this one a white fill that's a little transparent. I'm also gonna give this a outline just so it has little lines easier to follow along. And I've clicked into just my bar chart here and gone to the insert tab, and no, excuse me, gone to the design tab, hit add chart element and dropped in labels, just above in this case, so that we can actually see what we're looking at here. And I've increased my font size on all my labels here. And you can just increase your font size by clicking into any labels and then just adjusting your font size right up here. Now we don't have a legend, so people don't know what each of these represent. So we're gonna have to drop in a legend. I'm just gonna go to the insert tab, drop in a couple of rectangles and add some text over them. I'll show you how that looks in just a second here. So I just give this one the same gradient fill that we gave our, um, our actual area chart. And I just gave this one the same transparent white fill. And on both of them, I just added, and then I centered it here, made it 18 size, made it bold so it's easy to read. Now people know what they're looking at here. And when we put that all together, we get something pretty cool. Obviously we need to connect this all up to real data, but when we do, we can have it be dynamic. Uh, this is just a small example, but you see our geo chart up here is we change country, we can have it update. When we change country, we can have it update to any country we want. We can do the same same thing effectively connected to the whole dashboard and have it update dynamically. And every month when we add new data or every week when we add new data, whatever, it'll flow through to this whole thing and the whole thing will update to match whatever data we've added. It's pretty wild that we can do this all in Excel. Anyway, I hope that helps everyone. Let me know if you have questions in the comments. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. I'll be back soon with more.